it is finally time to write some Socket.io, and I hope I have convinced you by now that Socket.io is worth implementing over native web sockets, at least at this point in history. So that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to get a simple client connected to a simple server, and then we'll parlay it into a little chat app. Up down below here, I have created a new folder called Socket.io 101. So if you're following my structure, that's where I am. And I'm going to do an npm init-y because I need a package.json. We're going to install some node modules, so that will be that'll be the first thing that we do. And then I've got a file called basics.js and another one called basics.html. They are blank right now, so get those uh, get those fired up and unpause me when you are ready. So we are going to use Express here, and we're going to do require Express. That's a requirement for the course. You don't need to be a, an Express ninja, but you do need to know the basics of how to use it. The reason we are using it, uh, unlike over here in our WebSocket server, we ran .html here directly against our computer, so it was file colon slash 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 blah blah blah, just ws.html. While it is possible ultimately to get that done here with Socket.io, it is not worth it. There are some security features they've added in, which is a very good thing, because you will never run a socket server locally in your browser, ever. I, I can't imagine a scenario where that would be wise. You would always run it on a web server, even if it's on a closed network. More appropriately, it's probably going to be on a web server you know, that has cloud access. But in any case, we are going to use Express because it's not worth it to try and fire this up locally. On our next line, let's do const app equals, and we will invoke the express module. So that's what we stored here was the express module. We're going to invoke it and store it in app. So let's uh, let's go and get it. We'll put here third party module from npm, and down below let's do npm install express. And a note quick over here too. We're going to need this here in a minute. We we got a node modules folder now. At least I do from in installing express. Please also make a public folder. We're going to need this here in a minute. There's nothing inside of it right now, but that's why you, you see it over there. Uh, let's also do const socket IO equals require, you guessed it, socket.io. And so we'll need to in, npm install this as well. So npm install socket IO. And if you check your package.json, should have these two dependencies in your, in your project now. Okay. Both of these are third party modules. So we'll put two third party modules from NPM. And the reason I bring that up is because over in our in our WebSocket server, we we did our server just with HTTP, nothing else. We, we didn't we didn't install any modules didn't come from anywhere else. We're using Express now. So we fetched both of those from uh, from NPM. And then we'll put here const express server equals we are going to do app dot listen. And we're going to listen on port 8000. You can choose whatever port you want. I'm choosing port 8000. Okay, let's make sure that this works. Just do a quick sanity check. So nodemon against basics.js. I want to make sure you don't have any errors. You didn't forget to install anything or no missing variables or, or whatever the case might be. Okay, right below this, we're going to do const io equals, and then we're going to grab socket io. That's the socket io module. We're going to hand it the express server. Okay, again, save it, make sure you don't have any errors. Over in our other app, we did the same thing with WebSockets where we, we created a new WebSocket server and we handed it our HTTP server. We're doing the same thing here. It's just we've got an Express app now and I'm calling it Express Server instead of server just to be more clear about what we're working with. That is now stored inside of IO. Okay, so you've got a socket server listing on port 8000. It's just nobody can actually uh, get there. We could set up an HTTP route, but it, it's not worth it. That's not why we are here. So we're going to go over to our basics.html. And I'm going to have you drag this into your public folder. Okay, um, VS Code said, are you sure you want to do that? I am sure. I want this inside of public. And the reason we're going to have it inside of public is because it's going to be Express's job to serve this file for us. We're going we're gonna to load the site up at localhost 8000. And we can test this out just by doing an H1 and we'll put in here express server waiting for sockets. Okay, save that, that's a silly comment. But back over in our server, up here uh, right below uh, right below our socket IO declaration, we're going to do app.use and we're gonna call express.static and we are going to hand it uh, directory name. This is built into Node, so we don't have to declare that variable, and we're going to add to it slash public. If you've got a, a more preferred way to do this, that's fine. 
all this is going to do is make it so that anything inside of the public folder will render if somebody comes here. Okay, so we can we can now test this. If we go to our browser, and I've got a localhost 8000 up here, I'm going to put at the end basics.html and hit enter. And if all went well, it should serve up the, the static file on your server. Okay, okay, let's hop back over to basics, and we will get rid of this line. We don't need it. And if you want to put in an HTML boilerplate, go ahead. I'm not going to because it, it has potential to confuse uh, people. I just throw it in there quick. This is what it threw up for mine. I don't need it at the moment, and it, it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. So I'm going to leave it out, even though, strictly speaking, of course, it's always good to have. We are going to make a script tag, and we're going to set the SRC to slash socket.io slash socket.io.js. We'll close off that tag. Where is this coming from? This is automatically being served up over here by Socket.io. The fact that we have a Socket.io server running on port 8000, unless we turn it off, means that our Socket.io object will be available in the global scope. So we can test that out two ways, uh, lots of ways probably, but let's throw a script tag in here and let's do console.log IO. Let's come back over to the browser and refresh the page. And sure enough, we see our IO object here from line five. And what's going on here? Well, we can put a comment in here. This file, so socket.io.js, is added by the socket.io server. So over here, we have our express server. That thing is automatically, unless we tell it not to, is going to serve up socket.io.js. And then right here, Socket.io.js is going to add the I.O. object to the global scope. When I say global scope, I mean to window. So you can you could console like window.io and you'll get the same you get the same result. Okay? So that is how we are going to interact with it. This part gives us the I.O. object. We go back over to WebSockets, it it's in contrast to in our HTML file. We didn't need to do anything to get the WebSocket object or the constructor because it's native to JavaScript. Back over here, the browser needs to load up Socket.io so that we have access to this I.O. object. Okay? Now, we are ready to do const socket equals I.O., and we're going to hand it HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 8000. That will be enough to get our socket off the ground. Let's console.log our socket here. Okay? Save that. Hop back over and refresh. And there we go. We've got uh, we've got our socket there on the on the bottom of the page. Let's add a listener here. I'm going to comment that out. Let's add our first listener, and we'll do socket dot on connect, and then we'll pass it a callback. Okay. This works the same way we did it back over here with WebSockets. Uh, because WebSockets are native, you you get kind of the cheat on open. You can do the same thing with on click and several other events, and then you assign it to a callback over here. JavaScript events just work like this add an event to the socket when this happens right on some event what event the connect event I want you to run this code let's do this let's console.log socket.id so we have the socket here that, that we created by connecting to our uh, to our socket server whenever this event happens let's grab that socket and let's see what its ID is so save that come back over and refresh and you will get some random string. And every time you, you refresh, you should have a, a different, unique string that's attached to it. That means we are connected. <laughs> so you have managed to connect to your Socket.io server. This is a big win. Let's go over to our basics.js uh, file. Let's get a couple extra lines. And let's do the same thing over here. Let's do an io.on. The event is the connection event. And in this case, we're going to call it socket. And in here, let's say console.log and let's put in here socket.id has connected okay and I'm gonna clear the console out down at the bottom we should oh it looks like it already <laughs> it's already connected on the other side because socket IO has reconnect but let's refresh it anyway so we'll refresh it we get one ID come back over here and it says bam this socket ID has connected and it is the same thing in both places so we are connected the two uh, the, the browser and the server know about each other and we can say anything we want in this context okay very exciting to test socket io out we are going to throw in here inside of our connection on basics socket dot emit 
and then we'll put in here our event will be message from server and then we'll put in here an object we'll put some data and just say welcome to the socket server okay what's going on here well the socket is the thing that just connected to our socket io server okay so again the socket which is it, which is what we're getting in the callback the socket is the thing that just connected on our socket io server so this is how the event works and in contrast back to our websocket server we down here did wss.on connection we called it a websocket and then we did ws.send and then we put in here whatever we want over here instead of send in socket io and i'll put this comment in here in websocket we use send method and in socket io we use the emit method okay we have custom events that we can use in our socket server too so we're calling this message from server we're gonna have lots and lots of different events that we can denote somehow so that's the first thing is what the front end should be looking for this event and the second thing is what data will come through when it gets there so we're going to copy message from server go back over to basics.html and we're going to put a second listener in here socket.on we're going to listen for message from server we'll call what we got data and we'll put console.log data okay so again a listener okay for this socket when this thing happens what thing message from server run this callback and this is the thing that i get from the other side so we hop back over to our server and refresh this is our socket.id it happened almost instantly because as soon as we connected the server sent something out here is our data so let's send it back the other way inside of basics.html inside of our connect let's do a socket.emit here and we'll do we'll call it message from client and we'll send an object here we'll put data and we'll say hello from the browser okay so it's exactly the same thing but it's coming from the other side and this will happen on connection we'll look at we'll look at the whole process here in just a second but that means over on the server we need a socket dot on and that will be message from client exactly the same thing we've got here should be right here this will this will be a callback as well and we'll just console.log data, comma data like that. Okay, so the process is gonna go like this. We will refresh the browser, which will fire this line, line eight. So we'll make a connection. Two things will happen. As soon as that happens, this will run because we've been listening to the socket for this event here. And we've been doing the same thing over here, listening for a connection to the socket server. Okay, so IO, if this, if this helps, IO is always the entire socket IO server. Socket is an individual socket. Okay, so a socket just connected to our socket server and our browser just connected. So both of these callbacks are going to run this one as well as this one. And this one is going to log the ID. Over here, we're going to log the ID as well. We're going to start listening for message from server and we're going to send out message from client with this data. Meanwhile, over here, we're going to emit message from server with this data, and we're going to start listening for this. So they're going to crisscross each other. This is going to send over, which is going to fire this on, and this is going to send over, which is going to fire this on. They look pretty much identical. I'm going to copy this on, and I'm going to paste it here. You do not need to do this. It's just to compare them uh, to ne next to each other. You get the spacing right here, but we've got socket.on identical except for the name here and then everything else is exactly the same right we've got the, the callback the log everything is exactly the same so the api works the same on both sides we're interacting on the browser with the browser socket over on the server we're always interacting with one of the sockets that's connected to our server so let's go test it let me clear out the console at the bottom refresh we get our id we get our data from the server over on the server, we get our ID and we got the data from the browser. So congratulations, you have now mastered Socket IO. <laughs> of course you haven't really, there's a ton more to learn, but this is the essential elements that is Socket IO, sending messages back and forth with emit 
and with on. In the next video, we're going to take a look at a couple common pitfalls to try and get uh, out of the way as early as possible, and we'll move on to our chat client.